Bonjour, my little nerds. It is the last Saturday of March. Get your asses out of bed. The sun is out. We're finally jumping into spring. We're no longer hibernating or being depressed. And it's time to expand your brain and mine. I'm Dr. Shireen Idris, a board certified dermatologist based in New York City. And you've landed on Pillow Talk Derm, where we meet every Saturday at 10 a.m. And you get your pen and paper out and we get brighter up here and over here. If you have not already done so, subscribe to this channel, like this video, comment below if you're too impatient to hear about what I'm gonna talk about today. And let's jump in because the beauty industry is at its bullshit, bullshit again. Yes, it is at its bullshit again in the form of marketing with their newest, latest and greatest bio retinoids. You guys are probably gonna see this term pop up a lot a lot a lot over the next few months and years i think i think people are gonna brands are gonna try to marry it to biohacking because that's like the buzzword of the i don't know it used to be flavor of the month now it's like flavor of the second i have no idea how time is flying so fast and things are changing but you're probably gonna see it more and more and i just feel you guys have to be smarter when you see this term why? Because most of you, I personally, maybe not you nerds, because you guys are just a smarter breed. You're obviously already watching this video, not because you're part of this community and watching me are you necessarily smarter, but you're automatically looking for information, which puts you a step ahead, right? Most people are not looking for this sort of information, and they're probably walking down a CVS, an Ulta, a Target, a Sephora, a whatever, and they see bioretinoids and they think, oh, natural retinol, I want that, because why wouldn't I want a natural retinol? The reality is bioretinoids is not a term that has been standardized across any sort of board and it has not been stamped with any sort of seal of approval by any regulatory body. But before I get into the details of that, let me, let, tell us how you really feel, Shireen. Tell us how you really feel. Let's have a quick retinoid refresh, shall we? Because I think retinoids are very confusing because most people, myself included, will just say, are you using a retinol? And when we say that, we're kind of talking about the retinoid category, but you as a consumer has been used to hearing retinol. So we say retinol and it feeds into the confusion. But the category is retinoid, R-E-T-I-N-O-I-D. Okay, it's a class of vitamin A derivatives that have been proven over years to truly do several beneficial things for our skin, including helping to make your cellular turnover much more effective so your skin doesn't stay sticky and build up into baggage and gunk in your pores, creating blackheads and whiteheads and breakouts. It also helps to stimulate collagen production deeper within your dermis. This is a fact. All of these so-called Dr. Erms and experts out there, I don't know what they're talking about by saying it's thinning your skin because it's increasing cellular turnover, but dude, it goes beyond just the epidermis. It goes deeper and it helps to stimulate collagen production, which has anti-aging benefits because it firms the look of your skin and helps to minimize the look of your wrinkles. Additionally, because the cellular turnover is more effective, it can help with the look of discoloration and hyperpigmentation. Is it the best ingredient for discoloration? No, it is not. But is it one that you probably should include in your Ding. Full disclosure, I own this brand, Major Fade Line. Yeah, I personally did not include a retinoid within the Major Fade Line because you have to know the type you're using and the strength that you're using. You cannot mix a retinol in with other actives because it confuses the matter. This is one of the very few ingredients that should be on its own because you cannot tolerate it the same way your best friend can. And then you'll think, I just don't tolerate it and you'll quit it and you're doing yourself a disservice. There is a small subset of patients though who will never tolerate it and it's unfortunate for them, but we figure out other ways to get around it with other products on the market or other little tips and tricks to make you try and tolerate them. But something is better than nothing and you need to know what that something is so you know how to go up on the scale of intensity in terms of retinols. I just married a few of my sayings in one beautiful sentence. You guys should write that down because I need to come back and write that down for potentially a future launch. Who knows? Okay, let's go back to retinoids then. Within the retinoid category, you have the over-the-counter and then you have the prescription. For clarity's sake, prescription is tretinoin, okay? Adapalene used to be a prescription. Adapalene is also known as Differin, which is now available over-the-counter. 
How is a prescription now available over the counter? Their patent, trademark, whatever, ran out. Ask a lawyer, okay? But those are the prescriptions that are stronger and they are available at your pharmacy and you get a prescription from your doctor. You don't have to go wrong and strong. There's a whole subset of retinoids that are available over the counter that you can start to play with. Dip your toe, dip your ankle, dip your calf, then maybe your whole thigh, and then your torso, then your chest, then your face, then jump to prescription, okay? You have, starting number one, from the gentlest, retinol esters. Within the retinol ester category, there are three big ones, retinol propionate, retinol palmitate, and retinol acetate. These are probably from the most to least effective of the three, I named them, but the lightest on the market, and that's what you find in, for example, I think I have it here, your A313, which is honestly, I love this guy. It's very light, but I love it. Why? Because it does some magic voodoo shit on your face, where the next day you wake up looking airbrushed. But I will say, when I put it on, I do get itchy, and sometimes I can't tolerate it. I think it depends on your barrier that day. Okay. Those are the retinol esters. Then you have the retinols, the category that has confused everyone because everyone calls all of these retinols. But there is a subcategory called retinols. Retinol esters convert to retinols. Retinols are two steps away from being active, i.e. the prescription. So retinols are the pure form of vitamin A. They're 10 to 20 times less potent than the prescription, okay? But if you're sensitive, you can always start with the lightest, which is usually at 0.3. And do not be confused when you read retinol complex. A complex is not at 1% is not retinol, the pure form of retinol at 1%. A complex is a marriage of various different types of retinoids to add up to 1%. Okay, after retinol, retinol converts to retinal retinaldehydes, and these are a good alternative if you're looking for efficacy but want to minimize any risk of irritation or flaking that you would get from the prescription. There is now also a newer subcategory, which is kind of in between retinals and the prescription, called retinoic acid esters. These ones are also known as hydroxypinacolone retinoate or granactive retinoid. And it is relatively new, like I mentioned, but the claim here is that it's much more stable and gentler than the prescription alternative, and they claim that it is nearly as effective. You know what? Give it a shot. If everything else has failed and you have not been able to tolerate any sort of over-the-counter classic retinol, retinal, or retinol ester, Try this and see if that works for you. I have a deep dive, which I'm going to plug below with a bunch of product recommendations, but the point of this video is not to do a deep dive on retinols, and I was trying to give you guys a very nice bird's eye view of the situation. So what the hell then are bioretinoids? Let's get into it, shall we? Because bioretinoids are not a retinoid. Did you guys not realize I did not mention them once in my little six minute spiel of an overview? Um, Bioretinoids are a made up term that beauty companies are referring to as retinol alternatives. Okay? <laughs> I never learned of a retinol alternative going to medical school and residency and in the 10 plus years of training. It's misleading for you as a consumer because they are not the real deal vitamin A derivatives and it is not within the retinoid category. So what the hell is it then? It is a derived ingredient from plants that claim to offer similar benefits to the skin as a retinoid. It is a self-professed alternative. It is like saying, I am the latest and greatest philosopher. I'm a bio Plato. <laughs> Definitely not, you know? So although it may potentially mimic the behavior of a retinol by binding to a specific receptor in the skin, maybe, question mark, promoting cell renewal and improving skin density and elasticity, it hasn't really been proven. And it's kind of like stretching the truth. It's like saying, I'm driving my car and therefore I am working out because I am moving my foot and my calf muscle on the pedal. So my calves must look amazing by the end of this six hour drive. <laughs> You're stretching the truth. Your calf is not gonna, it's not a calf workout. Yeah, you're working out your calf, but it's not a workout for your calf. Calf, by the way, has always been a weird word for me. But um, anyway, do you guys see what I'm getting at? So for example, 
the crucial. And yes, I am guilty. Have I called it a retinol alternative in the past? Yes, because it was easier to categorize for people to understand. But when I see this message getting now pushed and pushed and pushed, I'm like, maybe we should not have done that. It's okay. We live and learn. But it is a better known alternative on the market. And honestly, alternative is a better word than bioretinoid because you're not claiming that it is a retinoid, whereas the other claim, bioretinoid, is truly just claiming that it is a retinoid. And what are examples on the market of bioretinoids? Now, the examples I'm about to bring up, it's not to bash any one of these brands. It's not to say that these are crappy products. I just want to have a full disclaimer here. It is to enlighten you guys that these are not retinoid alternatives, okay? They may have other benefits. And some of these products, I will say, I quite like. But I don't want you guys to be misled into thinking you're using a retinoid when you're not and you're trying to achieve something for your skin that might never happen or might take years for it to happen. So starting with the troublemaker of the bunch, Ren. Sorry. Ren Skincare Bio Retinoid Youth Serum. The reason I say they're the troublemaker is because these guys actually trademarked the term bio retinoid. You guys can see the little TM over here, which has me a little confused because they've trademarked the term. How are other brands using this? If there's a lawyer in the bunch who might understand this better, let me know. I'm actually curious. But this is their youth serum. Bio retinoid. Now, a lay person walking down the aisle might think they're using a retinoid when they use this. They are not. Their claim is that it offers retinol mirroring results using a plant derivative alternative to retinol called Biden's Pelosa. Now, Biden's Pelosa is a phytanic acid and it does work slightly similar to a retinol because it binds to the receptor and induces the expression of MMP1 protein. Uh, matrix metalloproteinase protein, which will help to protect your collagen. It has shown within the manufacturer's study that it can increase collagen and elastin production in the skin, but is the sturdiness of those studies there? Are the years of proof there? No. And is it a retinoid? No, it is not a retinoid because the retinoids, like we know already, are vitamin A derivatives, and this is not a vitamin A derivative. This retails for $59. And so I want you guys to be aware of that because if you come into my office and you say, I'm using a retinoid and you pop this out and you don't understand why you're not able to tolerate a retinol, this is why you cannot tolerate a retinol because it is not a retinoid, okay? So I just felt it's very important to enlighten you guys. New York City has plumbing issues. You guys will hear the neighbor either going to the toilet or taking a shower. The second one, which is on this list, at the moment. It's a longer list, but these are just top three that I could think of, okay? Is Kinship. They use a 2% bio-retinoid complex. I think that's how they got away by using this word, by calling it a complex, but bio-retinoid is trademarked by Ren, so I don't know how they're able to use it, but it's also even more misleading because then you think 2%, so strong, but no. It's a complex of nothingness <laughs> because bio-retinoid means nothing. What is in here then? Mr. Kinship, let us look into it. It is a patent pending bioretinoid from microalgae chlorella vulgaris that mimics the benefits of retinol without causing irritation. Because again, it's not necessarily a retinoid. Um, the complex also includes though retinal. So they've married then a retinal, which is stronger than a retinol to this quote unquote bioretinoid. So the retinal might irritate your skin, but the good news is the retinal is so low on the ingredient list that it's probably not at a high percentage at all, and it's probably put in there for a marketing claim. But chlorella vulgaris has some benefits that have been shown to improve with smoothing the fine lines and increasing your overall skin appearance. You know what? I think if anything, there's gonna be some antioxidant properties to this, and if you cannot tolerate vitamin C, it might be a good alternative. But if you're extremely sensitive, it does have retinal, although my personal opinion is that the retinal is probably very low in percentage and not that irritating at all. But is it an alternative to a retinoid? No, it is not. But there is use for this in other ways. And the last one, I quite like a lot. I've actually tried it a few times. It is going viral on social. I think it is a beautiful hydrating product that gives the appearance of a more taut skin and more hydrated skin. But is it a retinol? No. It is the In Beauty Project Extreme Cream Firming and Lifting Moisturizer. 
It is infused with plant-based bioretinol. So they didn't use bioretinoid, so they got around it by calling it bioretinol. Peptides and three times ceramide complex. It's this guy. Again, I love this product. I've actually tried it on my neck and chest and I was, you know, pleasantly surprised by the outcome of it. But when I read the labels, there is nothing pointing to a very specific ingredient that falls into this plant-derived bioretinol world. It is a combination of peptides, which does have merit. So don't take away from the merit of the peptides by trying to feed into the marketing world of bioretinols, retinoids, etc. What are the peptides in here? Guys, it's a laundry list. And I think that's why it's a pretty good product. But I just wish they had not fallen into that world. Heptapeptide 7, it has this acetyl hexapeptide 5 amide acetate, uh, there's hexapeptide 40, there's ceramides, there's others, there's many forms of ceramides. There is squalane, it is rich in glycerin, it also has a mushroom extract. Like, there's some good stuff in here. But the mushroom extract is not, by the way, the bioretinoid. Mushroom extracts have not been shown to work through the retinoic acid receptor, and it's not going to mimic the effects of retinol. It's a hydrating ingredient. It's from white mushrooms, okay? So I'm a little confused why they would fall into this world, but again, maybe they decided because there's no regulatory body regulating how this term is used, we're just going to call it bioretinols for a bunch of peptides that may or may not be plant-derived. Most of them are not. And see how it sticks. The purpose of this cream is to enhance the firmness of your skin and people know that retinols help with the appearance and the firmness of your skin. So again, this is not to bash anyone. I actually kind of like these products. You can use Kinship as an antioxidant. This you can use on your neck and chest. Pourquoi pas? But are you getting the effects of a retinol or retinoid in general? No, you're not. And I hope this was eye-opening to you guys because I do think that they are extremely misleading claims and unfortunately we don't have any regulation around it and you're hoping that you find people who will help shed some light on this so you as a consumer is not misled and then confused when you do actually land on a product with retinol in it why you cannot tolerate it. So I hope this was helpful. I hope you guys have a beautiful sunny Saturday and that Easter bunnies are leaping around your yards or your buildings or your front lawns. And you know what? If they're not, just buy a costume and go hop around. That's what I'm making my husband do. He better not look like a sick bunny because my kids still believe in the Easter bunny. Last year, he was a little flat. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed Saturday. I will see you guys next week where it's going to be a very exciting week for all of us. And oh, if you've watched it to the end till now, Monday is an exciting day. Goodbye, see you, adieu.